some stuff from the drone one, just kind of like different branches that, you know, your drone could go. So with <clears throat> something like um, 3D, once you create your objects in 3D, there's like a whole bunch of different areas you could actually take that to and, and, and work with it. So our workflow for this is that we've worked inside a cinema and then we've textured stuff inside cinema, um, just some base stuff, and then we're taking it into a program called Keyshot to do our final rendering, okay? So, and then sometimes you'd even go into Photoshop and do even more tweaking. So what I did with this one is um, the UV tools inside cinema are kind of crappy. So I wanted to bring this into a program called Substance. In order to do that, I had to clean up all my UVs and make sure that they were nice looking. So um, let me go into this, and I will open up my drone so you can see it. Somewhere, oh, I have a lot of stuff. So many things. Sorry, it's on my G drive, that's why it's not there. So I needed to bring it into Maya because Maya has a lot more um, UV layout tools, okay? So basically what we try to do, like our cereal box, is we had a, a cube shape and we needed to lay it out. So we were able to cut it, is what it's doing, it's cutting it into pieces and laying it flat, okay? And then we're able to take that image into Photoshop and draw our texture and then bring it back in. And that's typically not a huge deal to do when your object is simple. The drone, on the other hand, has a lot of complex shapes, so cutting it up inside a cinema is not usually uh, an easy task to do. Um, so usually people will go to another tool if they're working in cinema to do that. One of them is called Roadkill. Um, it's a funny name, but that's what it does, is it lays out UVs. Okay, UV. The UV part is important. Okay, so some, something like a head here. Um, that head, if you wanted to actually put a texture on the head besides just a flat color, like I actually want to paint a tattoo, I want to paint skin pores, I want to do whatever, you have to do the same thing of figuring out a way for the 3D application to cut it and then flatten it out, okay? So if you look here on the right, that's like the line going down the back of the head all the way to the neck, that's where they cut it and then they're able to flatten it out and kind of wiggle it around to get it so that it's perfectly flat and then you could paint a texture on there. If you were to skip the UV step uh, when you're trying to do a texture, uh, basically you'd start painting on something and the paint would just like streak across the object or you wouldn't be able to get a, a nice resolution. So even something like your hand, you can cut along each one of these pieces and stretch it out and get it so that it would look like a flat object, okay? So Roadkill is a nice tool because number one, it's free if you have a PC. Um, I think they do have a Mac version, but I'm not sure. I think it was a pay version at one point. Um, Maya's tools have gotten a little bit more sophisticated in uh, days past. Um, Maya, uh, tools. Um, there's a whole bunch of other one. Here's one called Heads UV Layout, which is another tool. Um, there's like a bunch of them. Okay, so I'm most comfortable with Maya's UV layout tool, so I use Maya's drone. There it is. Drone UV. So I'll show you what the UVs look like in mine once this is done. So here's my drone brought in from Cinema, and if I were to grab all the pieces and I went to where the UVs are inside Maya, this is every one of those pieces cut up and laid out perfectly flat. So this is every single piece. So if I want to put a texture on every single piece, I have to lay out every single piece, okay? And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to have the freedom to go in there and say, 
I want dirt or rust right here, I wanna put a picture right here, I wanna do this or that or whatever. So you have to do that step, okay? Now going from Cinema into Maya, you can export out as a, what's called an OBJ file, okay? And that will come right into Maya, no problem. And then it's simply a matter of tweaking your stuff, okay, or laying it all out. So every single piece, uh, these right here, just so you can see, is one of, what's that? There it is. This little piece right there. I probably could actually delete that piece because it's inside there, so it's not a huge deal, um, but I could. Um, some of these pieces I actually went through and laid out and reduplicated. So like these fan blades, it was actually easier to lay out the UVs on one and then duplicate that object all over again than trying to lay it out on each one of those objects. And the same thing for these coils inside here, um, I laid out one of the coils and then reduplicated it. But you'll see, here's all the coils. That one coil right there, that's all the pieces that go into it, okay? Um, then what I can do is I can take it into this program called Substance Painter, and then I can start to lay out the texturing. Now, the difference between something like Keyshot and Substance Painter. Keyshot is meant for rendering stuff, okay? So it's basically, like, think of it like a car um, that doesn't have any fanciness to it. I'm dropping on white car paint on this, I'm dumping on plastic, I'm dumping on metal, I'm dumping on all these things, and it's just like colorations is what it does, okay? Substance does more painting, more detailed stuff. So with this one, and I'm going to turn off all of these things. Let me just grab all my layers here and uh, group them. And I can turn this off, and I get back to my default white color, okay? Uh, except for that, apparently did not want to go away. All right, so here's what I can do with this, is in this library down here, there's a bunch of things called smart materials. And if I grab one of these smart materials, like um, here's leather sofa. I just drag it on top of layer one. So now the entire thing will have this leather sofa look to it, okay? And then I could, obviously I look stupid. <laughs> I could go into any one of these um, layers here and start to tweak what it looks like. So if I don't like the color of the leather, I can go to where we have this base color and, come on. Oh. Let me pick the different color. So this is just the edge color right here. So I could pick a different color for that. I can go to the leather color, which is right there, and pick a different color for this. And very quickly, I can change that. Now what's cool is that I can also limit it to certain objects. So I can say, I don't want this to be on everything. I only want this to be on certain pieces, okay? So let's say for whatever reason, um, the body is made of leather. So I can put a mask on it. And what you'll see if you, um, if this looks familiar at all, is you'll see a very similar interface to Photoshop, right? So in Photoshop, you have your layer, and then you'll have a layer mask, and then you can paint it. So if I wanted this layer to be visible on something, what color should it be on the layer mask? White, right? So I'm gonna go over here to this uh, selection thing, and I'm gonna make sure I'm picked on white, make sure I'm picked on polygons, then all I have to do is click. And what that does is it fills that layer with that, or fills that object with white. Okay, so very easily I can just click on objects and it'll fill it with that color. Then what I can do is grab something else. Let's say I wanted this steel here. I drop this on layer one. Because it's on top, it overwrites everything. So I just put a mask on it. I go back to my white mask and I can say I want these things to be steel. Oops. Missed it, there we go. Okay. So I can go through and do this to like pretty much this entire thing. Here's another one that looks really cool, put a mask on it, and I'll pick some parts. Uh, maybe these blades would look cool like that. And you can see how I can drag or click, which is awesome. I could even drag to grab too much stuff, and then go to black, and then get rid of stuff, which is really cool. Now we're not gonna touch this software inside of this this class, 
um, in the next level class we get more into this all right so now you can see how I can just color all this stuff really really neat um, so what I did was I went through that software and I was able to color my drone and what's neat about it is I can do something like this there we go so now my drone looks kind of like dingy and dirty and then I can also do something like this where it looks really clean and in that same file I can kind of give two representations of that same item okay and it's pretty quick I probably did these two renders um, within like 20 minutes of each other okay and it's simply a matter of removing the dirt layers so if I go to this I turn my other thing back on here's the clean version okay and just so you can see like logos and stuff like that are really easy ish to do Dirt, 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 copper one. I just have to find the plastic dirty scratch. There it is. So I'm going to make a new layer inside here. I can go to my brush, which is right there. And I'm going to go to my alphas, and I can pull off an image, like this greatest image in the world. Just drop that on the stencil here. And then I have to turn my stencil opacity back on because I turned it off. No, I didn't. So there's my logo. So then I can just paint my logo right here. Okay. So now I'm actually painting on the object as opposed to before having to go into Photoshop for this. So what I do is I go into Photoshop with the logo for MCC. I give it a black and white image. That way it knows basically like what's transparent, what's opaque. And now that logo is on my ship. Okay. And that's what's cool about painting inside the software is you don't have to jump into Photoshop draw it here and then reload it and then keep jumping back and forth to tweak things uh, for something like our box that's the way we should have done it because that's you know it's a lot of layout in there uh, but for something like a logo definitely cool to do that all right so now I'm gonna go and turn my edge damage on which you see adds a little bit of scuffness to this edge I'm gonna go to my um, dirt layer up here turn that on go to my dust layer here at that and you'll see that now my dirt and my dust and all those other layers are actually stacked on top of my logo. And then for this thing, I actually went to, I think it's this layer here. Yep. And I can add just a mask. And then I can go in with my paintbrush, remove my stencil, maybe add something different. That. Oops. Make sure I'm painting in black. So now I'm just removing my brush from that area. So I'm like eliminating where that brush is. So this is a really neat tool for doing this kind of thing because it's once you understand the foundation and the, the basic concepts of it, um, it becomes so much easier to create stuff that looks uh, super realistic. Like this was all created uh, that same way. These things here, there's a sword, there's another sword, same sword. Pokeball, and then the drone. And I also have a Thor hammer. I don't know what happened to that. It's in another folder, I think. Uh, this thing up. That one. It's the same image. Okay, so these were all created inside of Substance to give it a realistic look, to paint all these things in there, to paint these lines in here, to make it feel like this is kind of like a worn metal. Um, pretty cool. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yep. So that's the cool thing about this is that it's kind of like a, a uh, just a painting tool. Now you could render inside here. There's a camera button right here. I could click that and render it right inside there. Um, or I could export all my textures out and I can use them in different areas. Okay. So I could actually bring this back into cinema. I could bring it back into Maya. I could bring it into um, Unreal or any engine. Okay. It'll export out every single one of these maps. Um, and just to show you, this is this is some other stuff I've been working on. Here's some MCC coins. And those were all created. Uh, I built them inside Maya. I laid out the UVs. I brought them into Substance and did the texture painting. And then I brought this into here to make it so that I could collect the coins and the books. 
and the books that were also done inside Substance, if I get close enough to them, you can see the amount of detail that's inside that book. Now you can't actually read the pages on here, and that was intentional when I went and got the texture for this. Um, I just Google searched book pages, and I was painting it inside there without having read it, and then I realized what was on there was not appropriate, so I had to blur it out so that we wouldn't <laughs> read the pages. Um, so that's perfect. So it's a little Easter egg in there that there's smut inside of this thing. <laughs> okay, so that's Substance, and it's free. Um, you can download Substance for, I think it's like 230 days or 250 days or something like that uh, for students. Um, if you are interested in playing with Substance at some point, I have a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel you can look at. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff online, too, that you could also play with. Uh, I guess No, no, substance you can. Uh, UV, the roadkill one, you can't. Okay? Uh, the biggest thing is just making sure your UVs are laid out. Like, everything has to be laid out in order to do that. Um, so your cereal box, you actually could take your cereal box into substance, and it would work perfectly because those UVs are laid out. Um, our coffee cup, we couldn't because those ones aren't laid out. We only laid out the area where we put our image. Okay? Sir? For... PC it's free for Mac I think you have to pay for it but they've changed things since then like we don't use ro we use Roadkill a couple years ago we don't use it anymore because my has just gotten better okay so uh, I want to show that because I think it's cool to kind of see what else is out there because we're kind of like in this bubble of intro to 3d class which some of the stuff is like seriously we're doing this yeah whatever so some of that stuff is really awesome and if you look at um, anything that people have done like substance painted uh, models, whatever, renderings. Like you can see stuff like this is all like substance stuff. Like this is all done within substance. Another cool thing you can do, I still have it open, yes. I have another version open. Let me go to new file, select. I'll bring in my low res coin. So there's my coin, and I'll just drop a material on here. Copper. It's gorgeous. And it's already like reflecting in here, which is cool. Um, I do have to bake in some stuff, so just ignore this little step that I have to do. times better okay so uh, here's what's cool about this is that they have these um, particle brushes too All right. I need to go on to a layer it's not going to do anything but I'll go to a new layer then I can go to my particle or physical paint whatever you want to call it and I'm gonna paint with a different material just so you can see this so these materials down here I can also paint with so like on the MCC coin I actually have two materials that I painted with. One was like a really reflective one, one was like a brushed one. So this is gonna be like a red aluminum, just so we can see it better. So I'm gonna drop this onto my material, or just go over here and pick a different material. Uh, all right, I can't use the smart ones, I have to use one of these. So I'll use the blue one so we can see it. Okay, so what the um, particle brush is, particles, is one of these things. So it's actually gonna simulate like an actual thing in the real world, okay? So when you paint a texture, you're trying to get it to look like it has stuff on there. Like if there's water that leaked down the side of a, of a piece of metal, it would be mostly rusted on top and less rusted on the bottom. Or if there's water in a puddle, the rust would be on the bottom, right? So you're trying to emulate these things in your texture. So that's what this will do is that as I paint now, it creates these particles and then those particles are actually like dripping down this metal. And it's actually like way too much uh, bump on that. Let me take that down some. Oh, that's too much. Height, there we go. Uh, bump it down. Yeah, it's still a little bit too much, whatever. I'll just get rid of the noise. That'll make more sense. There we go. Okay, so now it's like streaking down here, 
Uh, what we would do before is that we'd actually have to find a picture of streaks and then paint that picture of streaks on top of that. But there's other stuff too, like fracture. I can just click and you'll see how it kind of fractures it randomly. Which if I'm doing like a piece of glass, like how quick is that, right? Uh, here's burning, so we should maybe change the color of this to red. Really awesome stuff. And then here is broken glass. <laughs> and then here's some swirlies. Yeah, so it's like incredibly awesome. Here's sandstorm. We'll go to this side so we can see it. So it's actually like dropping sand on here and interacting with the object. Uh, and then what that does, probably pick a different color. What that does is just give it more of the appearance that uh, of what would have actually happened, right? So like on these sides here, it's going to streak a lot more because those sides are like going around. Where on the top, it's not going to streak as much. Okay, so really cool stuff, and you can see how quickly that was. Uh, no big deal. And the best part is, you're like, I don't like that. You can just delete the layer, and now it's back to where it was. Okay, really awesome. So uh, check out Substance because, like I said, it is pretty sweet. And if you stick with 3D, we'll be using it a lot more. All right, so back to uh, Cinema stuff. Close this window. All right, so our next project we're going to be working on is a uh, character head. Character head. And what I want you to do is when you do this initially is it find an image that you can kind of work off of um, that would help you out, okay? So some people are good with just something like this where they can see what it looks like from the side and the front. Um, some people just usually need like a front view, okay? Now we're not modeling this person, we're simply using it as a way to figure out where proportions are, right? So these eyes are, um, you know, there's basically an eye, an eye, and an eye here and there's a nose and a mouth and the shape of the head. Some people need to visually see that kind of stuff and it does help you to have that kind of picture at least on your screen while you're working, okay? Um, there are ways to bring it inside of cinema. We don't need to go that far. So I'm gonna start building this character and um, uh, some people, when they model, they actually build it out of a sphere and that's like way too many divisions for me to start with. I like to start off with a cube and what I'm doing is I'm starting off very similar to what we did with the drone, okay? And the fact that I'm going to look at where I can find symmetry so I can make my workflow a lot quicker. So I know that in this case, um, the symmetry for the character is going to be straight down the middle. Even if later on I decide to give my character a crooked nose or one eye that's big and one eye that's small, initially I want everything to be symmetrical and then later I'll tweak everything that I need to. So I'm gonna stick with just that and hit C to uh, knock the shape in there. Then I'm gonna go to my edges, I'm gonna insert an edge loop. Uh, not restricted to selection. I don't know why that keeps defaulting back on. And I'm just gonna put that in right there and then delete the half side of this. There we go, and then I will take this edge and just make sure that's snapped perfectly to that center line. The hardest part about using Cinema and Maya and all these other programs is that my hotkeys keep getting messed up. All right, so I'm gonna turn my snap on, work plane snap, grid snap. So now we're snapped right to the center line. So then I can just use my symmetry, and that way I can see what else is going to be happening on that side. Uh, there's my symmetry. Okay. So just like the drone, I'll work on one side, and the other side will just update. So that way I don't have to worry about constantly going back and forth um, and trying to tweak stuff. So I'm going to go here, and when you create anything on this, you want to set it up in a way that you know um, you don't add too many divisions at once people get really excited and they're like, I need to put in the eye and the cheek and the mouth and all this stuff at once and get the head, shape of the head. 
get the basic shape of the head first. So I'm going to add like a division here. And I'm going to start to just pull this out. So this is like where the nose is going to be. This is where the forehead is going to be. I can turn my snap off now. I don't need it anymore. This is where the back of the head will be. And this is where the neck is going to be. Oops, missed that other one. Okay. And then the same thing here. This will probably be tucked in. This will probably be tucked in. And again, I don't know why that keeps defaulting it back off. There we go. Okay. Then I can go back to my knife tool, and you'll see the process for this is going to be very um, simple. Just adding divisions, and then moving the divisions in place. Now, because we're not going with something that is humanoid, um, as far as like getting it to look exactly like a human, we have some play here. So if the eyes are higher up or lower down or further out, that's not going to be a huge deal. The, I, the concept with this is getting stuff kind of like roughly positioned, and then we can start to move it around. So even if I build an eye that's like way over here, I can then take that and just kind of rotate it and put it exactly where I need it to be. So I don't have to worry about getting it perfect right away. Okay. Uh, think of it very much like sculpting. All right, so there's the mouth. We'll put that there. And I'm looking at all the views. I'm not just looking at the one. I want to look at the front view. I want to look at the side views. And I want to move everything around. I think I should probably put it in a division this way. And if you skip some of these steps, like you just try to get into it and just like, I'm just going to start adding a whole bunch of, of line work. You're really going to regret it because usually people go too far on their stuff before they need to. You can see how simple my model is right now, and you can actually see the face coming to life. You can see where there's going to be an eye about here, the nose will be over here, and then the mouth will be down in that area. Okay. If you add too many divisions too quickly, it'll look really, really chunky. And then just like the drone, I also want to put on the um, subdivision to help smooth this out. Okay. So I'll grab my symmetry, I will um, subdivide it. Go, and then I can see it. Now, another thing we may want to do, um, let me do that last time. If I go to this and I say instance, there we go. I gotta remember how I did this. I put this inside instance. That's what it was. I grabbed the cube, dropped it into here, and now this instance is like another cube. Okay, so when you create an instance right here, um, you just drop in the object you want to instance, and what it does is it's basically like linking that object together. Okay, so think of like the mirroring, the mirror that we did, or the symmetry. It instances it and then flips it over. That's what it's doing. Um, with this, it's a separate object altogether. So what I can do is then mirror this one. And this is, again, um, depending on your comfort level with this. And then add my subdivision on top of that. Okay, So now I have this cube, which is instanced right here. It's symmetried, and then it's subdivided. And what that gives me is basically a, um, a rough version on the outside. And then it gives me a smooth version on the inside. So that way I can see what it's looking like smooth and then also work on it while it's in rough mode. Okay. And then if I want to render this one, I could turn this bottom number off or the bottom letter off and hit control R and you'll see that that blocky one doesn't render, but the smooth one does. Okay. So that's something else you could do to it too, just to give um, a little bit easier workflow. So I'm just going to take these points to kind of move those down. Uh, sometimes it helps too to look up wireframes for whatever you're trying to model. So something like a head. If you're just like, I don't know where these points are supposed to go, download or look at a um, wireframe for it and it'll kind of help you out. Um, I do want this to come down so we'll actually have like a neck and a, um, a, tor a little bit of a torso. So I'm going to go to the faces here and here. I'm going to say extrude. 
when I extrude inner first. There we go. And I'm going to delete this one and that one. Because I need this edge to be nice and clean. So that's why I deleted those two so I can push this over to the center. Now I can grab these two and extrude that out. And when you extrude something that doesn't have an edge here, you'll see that you get these two faces. So then I just have to grab these two faces and then delete. And then I can grab these points and pull these out. Okay, so you can see how I'm getting like the neck shape. I'm getting the um, chest shape. Okay, and again, if it helps, you can hit Control R to see what it looks like when you put them together. There's a little bit of a crease here. I'm probably off. Like when I move that line over, I didn't snap it. So it's probably off a little bit and I just need to line that up. Okay. So this is your first step is just to get a nice blocky shape. And I can see his head looks like it's leaning back some. So I actually want to go to this view and maybe pull that back some more. Pull that forward a little bit. I can go with my knife tool and add a division here. Scale that in some. Okay, so I'm kind of looking at this side to see what it looks like while I tweak this one. All right, and I can probably delete these faces in the bottom too. I don't need these. There we go. And that'll help keep that flared out. Your jaw kind of comes up a little bit, so I'm going to start moving these points up a little bit more. Okay, so now you can see the jaw is starting to form here. All right, the jaw is actually a little bit too close to his chin. You got to get a little bit more of a neck there. A little bit too close to his neck, not his chin. good okay so now I'm gonna start to this is as, as low res as we want to go right now okay um, now I want to go in there and start adding in the eye the nose and the mouth I don't do them all at the same time I add them all in individually okay now whenever you model something like I said using a uh, image uh, face wireframe using an image definitely helps because you're trying to look at the flow of each one of these spots here. Um, looking at something like this may not help because it's like way too many divisions, but something like that is great because you can really see where these things are, are working. Um, even something like this is cool because they've kind of outlined the different areas or something like this is really cool. Um, whenever you model a creature or a character and you're trying to make it look realistic, um, You want to look at the muscle structure because this is where, um, if you're trying to get something that looks super realistic, this is where everything is going to kind of be based off of. So for the eyes, you'll see that the eye shape is actually very, very round right here, right? Your eye muscles, all this stuff here is round and that's what allows us to open and close. Same thing with the mouth, the muscles are kind of rounded here. So on this, I want to create that same kind of look. So I'm going to add a division right at the center of where I want the eye to be. Okay, so imagine that the eye is going to be about here. Again, I can move it if I need to. So I'm going to add a division there. Then I'm going to switch over to my tool and just start to tweak the shape a little bit. Okay, you never want to add a division without tweaking the shape. And I may need to take these points just to give me a little bit more room and just kind of pull that down some. Okay, so I don't want points t on top of each other. Then I'm going to go back to the knife tool and I'm going to slice it the other way. Okay, so this is going to be the center of the eye, right there. That's the center of my character's eye. Okay, and again, I want to be able to tweak these things, so I'm just going to go and subtly kind of move some of these points. Okay, some I'm moving outward 
because that is where if you look at your face this is on me at least this is pretty flat here so that point looks like it's still on the chin area so I want that to be flat if I pushed it in oops, that will cause him to have like a pointy chin which is not what I have okay and then the same thing here on top uh, this probably should come down a little bit there so his head isn't so square and flat on top Those points are actually probably good. These points can probably come in a little bit more. And this will be the hardest thing is like, which points do I need to move? It's obviously very confusing because you have lots of points to move. So the biggest thing is making sure everything kind of looks uniform. So I moved these points because there was kind of like a wedge, like these points were close to the together. Then the next row were kind of out and then the next row were out further. So I want to have uniformity going across as best I can not always going to happen but for the most part something like that you definitely should okay so back to the eye part so now I have this eye right here if I can't see my points I can just turn off these things okay I can turn off my subdivisions um, or I could turn off this whole object so I don't have to look at it so now what I need to do need to do is create that rounded shape right here so I'm gonna go back to the knife tool and I'm gonna use my line <clears throat> and I'm just gonna draw in this eye shape. Okay. Now I can't leave it like this. Remember when we model something, we want to have pretty much quads as, as many places as we can or as most as we can. Um, especially on the face, that's really important. So this face here has too many sides. There's one, two, three, four, five sides here. So I have to get rid of that eventually. So uh, eventually I'll come in with my knife tool and just go around and start to clean this up. Okay. And now what I'm also doing is going into this, because you'll see that these are now triangles. And I'm going into here and I'm adding another division right there. Okay. Now I do this kind of after I'm done with the eye, just because I want to focus on the eye and then I'll go and clean it up. There we go. Um, yep, that should be good. Now I could have gone the other way too, like on these points here. I could also go up. And that would work too because, um, oh, it wouldn't work. Oh, it would work. I just didn't draw the other line in yet. This and that. Okay. And that'll also give me quads this way. All these pieces are all four sided. Okay. So I just decided to go, in this case, this way. Now, once I'm done with my model, I may change my mind. I may say, I don't like the way it's flowing, or I don't like how it's bunching there. I want to change it, and I'll tweak those. So now what I'm going to do is grab every other one of these points. Like that. And I'll go to my scale tool and I'll just scale these up and scale these over. Scale that down a little bit more. And then I think I just need to tweak some of these positions. So you're not getting the actual full eye shape yet, it's just a matter of getting the rough uh, area of it. And then just so that I don't have bunching happening, I'm going to pull this point up here, pull that point there, pull this point down here. Okay, I'll do the same thing the other side. All right. So now I'm going to grab these faces here, and I'm going to extrude it in. And I'm going to grab the faces and extrude it in again, and then I'm going to extrude it like that. Okay, so I extrude it inward, inward, and then I pushed it inside. And what that does, it gives me a nice rounded shape for the eye um, to exist. Okay, so now what I can do is, um, it looks like some of my points are kind of crossed back here, so I'm just going to tweak these a little bit. Okay. Uh, then I can start to shape what the eye is going to look like. So I'm going to bring in a sphere, and I'm going to scale it down so it looks closer to the size of an eyeball. like that. Now what I'm going to tell you that this thing is going to look pretty horrible when I'm done with the first stage. So like when I show the end part today, it'll look pretty horrible. But then the next part of this, um, I'll be able to clean it up. So I'm going to go to my lines here so I can see this. And I'm just going to start to move these lines up. Right, 
turn my lines back on. I'm going to pull them forward a little bit. And what I'm going to try to do is get a consistent line touching the sphere. So this edge here on the bottom, I want that to be the one that's pretty close to touching the sphere. Okay. And when I marquee, I have to make sure that I spin around and make sure I grab only the points I want. It's very easy to accidentally grab stuff you don't want. There we go. There we go. Oops. Maybe this one I missed a little bit. So there's my basic eye shape. Um, and then what I'm going to do is take my basic eye shape and then start to deform some of this. So I'm going to grab my points, or my edges. And this edge I'm just going to push inward. These edges I'm going to pull outward. And then I can start to maybe um, bring some of these points in a little bit further. I think those may have been just a little bit too far apart. There we go. Okay, now let me show you what it's going to look like on the other one. You'll see that now that's starting to look more like a um, like an eyelid and uh, an eye socket. Okay, that's why you want to turn it off sometimes because it could get really confusing like while you're working on it. Okay, so I can keep tweaking that. I think I'm just going to leave it there for now. But this is what I was talking about before, where if you don't like the placement of the eye, um, I could grab all these points that are right here. Let's make sure I deselect these ones I accidentally selected right there. And I could move it. So if I want the eye to be higher or lower, or if I want it to be um, rotated some, I can rotate those points around and really customize where that eye is located. So the idea is just to make sure it's the geometry is there, then you can move it around to where it needs to be. Okay. So for the nose, that's probably the easier part of this. I'm just going to go in with my edge loop. Oops, too close. That, okay. So I put in an edge loop about here, and then I can go into those faces. I think I want an edge loop right about there, just so I can bring the nose down just a little bit further. And I'm just going to go and extrude and pull that out. Okay. Now again, that's going to look horrible if I just leave it like that. So I need to, just like everything, delete these faces. Maybe go to my side view. And start to tweak the shape of the nose. Whoopsie. So I'm not going to go with anything too um, insane on here. I just want to have a basic nose shape, and then I can customize it inside of ZBrush when we get to ZBrush. Okay. So right now, what we're doing in this in this form is just kind of getting the rough shape of our character. Okay. So even if his nose doesn't look perfect here, um, as long as it looks like it has structure, it'll be fine because once we get to ZBrush. Then we can start to tweak and sculpt stuff a little bit further. Um, like the nostril is obviously missing. Um, I could use a bridge and put these two things together. Oops. Come on. Or I can just delete it and then use the bridge on the edges. And that'll create a nostril right there, and then I could tweak that shape. Um, but I could also do that inside a ZBrush too. 
All right, so now for the mouth, I'm gonna go to my lines. And this is where the mouth is gonna be. So wherever this line is, that's like the lip line. So if I wanted to move the lip line down, I could. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna add my divisions here. So I'm gonna go in with my line, turn single off so it stops doing that. And you'll see the shape that I just made there. Um, that's gonna be where the lips are going to extrude from. I just need to tweak this. Pull, come on. Pull that down some. Grab this. And I'm just tweaking that shape just to give it a little bit more structure to it. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my um, knife tool again. And now I can go into edges. and just kind of push that in, and then here's the lip shape right there. Okay, so in any part of this, if you're not sure, like, I don't know what the geometry is supposed to be doing, I'm not sure, like, where these cuts are supposed to happen, um, a lot of it is just kind of, like, looking at your geometry and just trying to find the best spot for it. And if it doesn't work out, I could delete these edges, and then I could add in a new lip, okay? If I didn't like... Um, this piece right here, I don't like how that nostril turned out. I can just delete those and then go back to my edges, go back to bridge, and then just re-put those edges back in there. So now it's back to where it was before I put the bridge uh, in there. Okay, so now let's see what this looks like. Okay, holy cow, there's a hole in his nose. <laughs> let's go back to edges. And this will happen often because as you start to extrude stuff, it just stuff creeps away from the center. So I'm just going to scale to flatten it out. So I hold shift to flatten it. Then I can go into my front view and then just line this up right to the center. There we go. So now if I hit control R, that's what my character is looking like. Now again, that's not beautiful. It will be though, okay? This is just the rough format of my creature. Um, the nose is obviously too, like, coming out of the forehead. Um, the eyes are not detailed enough to actually feel like eyelids yet. But the format is there. I have the structure for the eyes. I have the structure for the nose. I have the structure for the mouth. Um, now look at right here on the side of the eyes. You see how you have that, that weird streaking going on? If we look at where I have divisions, let me turn this stuff off. Um, remember I drew these lines in for the head. Uh, let me just turn off this thing real quick. This is gonna bother me. There we go. Uh, I just turned my phone Fong angle down so that I can actually see this. Um, see how we have these edges right here that just stop and they go into nothing? This is why we don't want to have uh, triangles or anything with more than four sides. Because when we do have that, we end up with this like streaking pattern right here. Okay? So we always want to continue these things around. So once I have my um, stuff kind of roughly lined up, then I can go with my edge tool or my knife tool and just continue these lines all the way around. Why are you on? There we go. Okay, so I hit K to get back to the knife tool and I'm just drawing here. find the right angle to draw that at okay so now that I've done that you'll see that there's not gonna be as much streaking uh, as before there's still a little bit up here and that 
that case, let me see. And sometimes it is, you have an extra point there that you maybe missed. Yep, see I missed. So I have to grab those two points and use the weld to put those back together. Now it's nice and smooth, okay? So that's the idea with this, you're creating a nice smooth representation of your character. Um, and then the, um, this is the first stage. So you wanna create this blockiness, you wanna get the eye roughed in, the nose and the mouth roughed in. Sizing is not important at this point. I can shrink the mouth down, no problem. I grab points and just scoot them over. Uh, I can make the eye bigger by scaling those points up. I can make the nose bigger by tweaking things or modifying stuff. You wanna get as few points as possible on this character. The next step will be to go through and clean up the lines. So where I have a big gap of lines here, and then a medium, and then these are maybe a little bit too tight, I wanna go through and start to spread those out so it's pretty even across the entire thing. The more evenly spaced your lines are, the smoother the shape is gonna be. Otherwise, we're gonna end up with something that's really smooth up here, and then really kinda of like chunky down there, okay? So, first things first, um, you can do that stuff, okay? Um, and then after this, we're pretty much like two steps away from going into ZBrush once we kind of cleaned it up, all right? So majority of this assignment will actually be done inside of ZBrush. And then obviously make sure you save your stuff. And I'll show you what my old head looked like this one I think yeah so that's what the old head looked like right before I brought it into ZBrush and you can see the division of lines you can see how um, how uh, nicely divided all the stuff is but there's not any real big areas where it's like crazy amounts of divisions or anything uh, and then when I take this and smooth it you can see what that looks like it feels like it has some kind of jaw a nose um, and then the lips on there too okay so I'm gonna put, all right, so there's the character and you see now he has nostrils, he has more of a lip, um, his um, eyes are a bit more defined and he definitely has some skin detail inside him too. And I gave him little cat ears. <laughs> he did not have cat ears uh, once he left the cinema, okay? Um, so you'll be able to, again, kind of play with these things once we get inside there to really tweak what he looks like. This is like the simplest you'd be going with this. Um, we could go a lot further in here and adding like a whole bunch of detail to it. Um, again, if you, Google is so amazing. Like all the characters, like when they do Wolverine for movies, they're doing Wolverine inside of ZBrush. So that's all ZBrush head stuff. And some of the stuff you wouldn't even be able to tell um, is like a, a 3D thing versus the real thing. So these are all different things that you could actually do inside of ZBrush to get your character to look super awesome. And it goes on and on forever. Is that Gollum? Sort of. Okay. So um, 